Hello, so I'm here to explain how to start the coolest quest in Starfield and share some knowledge regarding just absolutely amazing references to real life events and people in that quest. Before we dive into it, I'm gonna briefly mention that in order to start and most importantly complete this quest, you need a ship with a strong graph drive to reach a high level system called Charybdis. The Star Eagle I got by completing the Free Star Collective questline was not good enough. Uh, what All you can do is either upgrade your ship, upgrade your astrodynamic skills it. or you can go you to your do. parents and they are gonna provide you with a ship called Wonderwell that can jump great distances. All that being said, here's a small glimpse into what you can expect from the quest. I am Franklin Delano Roosevelt, leader of the Pragmatist Society. But I feel in my bones that I am a Manirinas for true. Genghis Khan. A pleasure to meet you. I was cloned off a monster. America's first serial killer, H.H. H. Holmes. My name's Amelia Earhart. Yes, yes, you heard it right. The quest is gonna introduce some of the most famous historical figures. I wanna shortly talk about amazing references that Starfield can provide. So in this case, it's an obvious reference to a Star Trek episode that aired in uh, 1995. At the beginning of the episode, we see the Voyager ship receive an SOS call that requires the crew to further investigate a planet. That's how the quest starts in the game as well. And then in the Star Trek episode, the crew finds these cryo chambers with preserved humans. Surprise, surprise, they get to talk to Amelia Earhart. She's a very, very well-known American aviation pioneer. She's a feminist icon and she became especially famous because of unclear circumstances under which she possibly died. So what happened was that Emilia and her navigator disappeared while attempting circumnavigational flight around the globe. Uh, there's been a lot of theories regarding what happened. Funny enough, in Star Trek, the show says she's been abducted by the aliens. What I have to tell you is going to sound hard to believe, even preposterous. We think you were abducted from Earth in the 1930s and brought millions of miles through space to a planet on the other side of the galaxy. And if you talk with our charismatic aviation uh, star in the game, you can choose a dialogue option suggesting that her disappearance was actually related to the aliens. All right, let's discuss the game quest itself. So without giving too many spoilers, you're gonna land on a planet with clones of famous historical figures who are locked in a location called the Crucible. Uh, they are all trapped there against their will for reasons I think you should probably discover yourself. Anyway, nobody wants to be trapped there, so three factions uh, came to light within this community, and all three have different beliefs regarding how this imprisonment should be handled. There are renegades who want to escape and choose their own destiny, no matter what it is. There are believers who want to escape and conquer the settled systems, and there are pragmatists who try to find the middle ground and want to test themselves before they integrate with the settled systems. The whole quest is just a great learning opportunity, so I will discuss the people I recognize and have a bit of knowledge on. At the start, at the entrance, you're gonna be welcomed by someone named Ada. So she's a clone of Ada Lovelace, who was a mathematician, and she's best known for being the first computer programmer. She's also the first person to recognize that machines can do so much more than just be used for numerical calculations. I studied computer science, so I have to mention here the Ada programming language that was obviously named after this absolutely ingenious forward-thinking woman. Even Nvidia, in order to honor this great figure, named a GPU microarchitecture after her. It's called, well, obviously, Nvidia Ada. The Lovelace architecture. Okay, so moving forward, the next person you're gonna meet is President Franklin Roosevelt. I was not born in USA and I don't remember history as much anymore, so hopefully I'm not getting it wrong. Uh, but in the game, he's the head of the so-called pragmatist faction. Just to explain pragmatism, it's a word that has ma many different meanings in philosophy, in ethics, in politics, in common language. Best I can explain it in relevance to the game is that pragmatism is an approach based on a belief 
that ideas need to be practical and achievable. So you know how, uh, for example, some people say that they're going to end poverty? That's idealism. That's the opposite. That's not a pragmatic idea because realistically it's not doable. Uh, a pragmatic person would say that they're going to come up with an XYZ idea and propose truthful, transparent ways to realistically reduce poverty. So back to Roosevelt. Uh, he was a president during a very difficult time in US history from 1933 to 1945. Uh, so as you can tell, he was a president during the Great Depression and during World War II. But generally speaking, Roosevelt was one of the best presidents USA ever had. He expanded presidential powers, gave more meaning to the federal government, taxed the rich, and through reforms tried to make life easier for the working class. Interestingly enough, in my playthrough, Roosevelt becomes the leader of the community um, in a way that a totalitarian leader would rule. Uh, being that kind of chief in power is actually what the left in USA would accuse FDR of being because they believe that powers given by the Congress to the president just went way too far. Anyway, in the game, FDR is all about making sure that the community takes slow, realistic steps to become a part of the settled systems. He was against just letting everybody go to space in fear of what kind of consequences such a decision would have, especially that there were some really ill minded minded powerful clones in the crucible. Furthermore, he did accept the idea that perhaps the community ultimately is going to fail in creating a proper government and fail to assimilate with the colonized star systems. That's real pragmatism and makes for a very accurate design for the in-game Franklin Roosevelt. Just to prove it, I'm gonna share a real quote from the president. He once said, it is common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, admit it, frankly, and try another, but above all, try something. Yeah, so Clown Roosevelt is being 100% truthful and open about all possible outcomes. He's also the one who encourages the player to go investigate a location called the facility. The facility is the key to controlling what happens to the crucible. And at the end of the quest, uh, there are multiple outcome options. You get to choose uh, one and decide on the community's fate. Once you go around, you will end up meeting Genghis Khan, who right off the bat tells you that he is nothing like the Mongol Emperor and that he is his own person. He is the leader of the faction called the Renegades. I think the character creation is unfortunately a bit of a missed opportunity. The clone and the real Genghis Khan have barely anything in common. While the real one was responsible for creating second biggest empire in human history, the game one would rather be allowed to ditch the crucible and go do his own thing. I'm gonna add to the video a definition of the word renegade. As you can see, renegade is a person who deserts and betrays an organization. So this guy is the complete opposite of the real historical figure. Mm, in some of the hidden files in the game, it is said that Khan was created to balance out Franklin. As a matter of fact, where siding with the president results in fewest people dying, siding with the Khan results in most people having to be killed. There is not much more to be said about him. As I said, it's probably a missed opportunity. Alright, so next encounter. This person is not very well known. I'm gonna admit that I barely studied here in high school, more in the context of the Roman Empire, but here we go. You will meet the greatest queen of African history, Amat Nirenas. She ruled the kingdom of Kush. She came from a long line of female warrior rulers and achieved the impossible at the time, which was stopping the expansion of the Romans. She managed to fight for peace negotiations, and if I remember correctly, the Kush did end up losing some territories, but, but they didn't have to pay the tribute to Roman imperial province Roman. called the Roman Egypt. The peace treaty was in effect for a long time, Your which spared Kush people unnecessary conflicts, Even which is one bad. hell of an accomplishment. My in game, if you side with Franklin, uh, him and the queen are going to negotiate for peace as well, which is an amazing some reference. Also, in the game, Amanirenas claims that her faction, called the Believers, uh, fights against the greed and oppression, which is another Fortune. reference to real life events, the, the oppressors and being the Romans, of course. She's also the one to reveal that the facility used to have a test and if someone reached their full potential and passed it, they were set free. 
not I'm sure what it's referring to, maybe to nothing at all. If you know Allies. the answers, let me know in the comment section and below. And this smells. Now, remember I mentioned that the Let's game has a secret it. file? So the file That's mentions that just how Jenkins Khan was a counterbalance to Franklin, Aman Irenas was balanced by another great politician in human so history many. called Otto von Bismarck. You can't meet him in the game, but I'll briefly mention who he was. He's the guy who unified Germany in 1871. He created the first welfare state. What should be noted in relevance to the game is that Bismarck was Have known no for a conflict called own. Kulturkampf, which was uh, targeting the Catholic Church. As I mentioned, the African queen is a leader of a faction called the Believers, and Otto was there to balance her existence. A coincidence? I don't think so. I'm sorry. I just can't take the chance. Last person I'll show you in this video is Wyatt Earp. Earp is a very well-known yes. American gunfighter and a lawman. However, yes, we do. now know of his involvement in I'm illegal activities, including I'm murder, but for some reason he's often portrayed as some kind of hero. Anyway, you're gonna meet Earp, who eventually America's will admit that he's in fact H.H. H. Holmes, H. H. who is Holmes. one of the scariest American serial killers. So Wyatt, or Holmes, admits that he disguised his true identity out of of fear for what other clones would do to him if they found out who he really is. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll just mention the most interesting tea on H.H. Holmes. So the real one worked in multiple stores. There's a suspicion he even murdered someone in one of them, and Wyatt from the game does run a store too. So suspicious. Not just that, the real serial killer is probably best known for having built a hotel, later called a murder castle. The building was supposedly used to lure in tourists and, you know, harming them. So Wyatt in the game actually runs a hotel too. So despite trying his best not to connect with the person he does not uh, want to be, he still follows H.H. Holmes tendencies. And on top of that, he chose to disguise himself as just another murderer. Anyway, if you made it all the way to the end of my video, thank you very much for watching. If there is anything I got wrong or you want to share some other fun facts, please leave a comment. If this kind of content is something that you find interesting, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Roosevelt.